You know, my mom always told me, if you don't have nothing good to say about an individual, don't say it at all. Shame on some of these broadcasting stations. Let's talk about it. Sunday afternoon, Sunday, so we're having another Sunday sit down with your man G, the number one cowboy fan, Hampton, and seem like it's starting to work out for Sundays for whatever reason, but that's here's well, here we are again. Had to work on Saturday, so anyway, here we are, guys. Um, glad to see everybody. Hope everybody's having a great weekend, and I'm hoping uh, you're enjoying your Sunday as well. And here we are today in the cowboy huddle where we come together and talk cowboy talk and i just want to say thank you to all the new subscribers we are continually growing the channel is growing we have more engagement from our subscribers and i just want to say thank you for participating for being a part of the cowboy huddle where we talk nothing but cowboy talk so with that being said I, before we get started guys i would like for you guys if you would take the time to hit the like button share button and the notification button so you will be notified when the next video is posted and also we need to move uh on and i have to say a big shout out to strong faith kennels where the breeder is lawrence boyd Devoted, confident, a.k.a. registered strong pedigrees and Rottweilers. And if you're interested in purchasing or investing in a Rottweiler, I su strongly suggest that you will give this uh, individual a call, Lawrence Boyd, and um, talk with him, and I'm sure he will hook you up. You can also find him at www.strongfaithkennels.com. So, Big up to Mr. Lawrence Boyd and all what he does as far as taking out time of raising and breeding pedigree Rottweilers. So with that being said, guys, here we are. There are some things I want to talk about. Um, and I didn't know if I wanted to address this or not, but I addressed it on TikTok. And um, it kind of bothered me. You know, sometimes... What we report, you want to try to report as much facts as you can without, you know, uh, stretch, stretching the truth or telling a lie. But also, when you're reporting, you have to be cautious because the things you say and the things that you may uh, share with others can also affect others in a certain type of way. And I say that to say the situation that went on, um, again, you know, we talked about Mary and Barbara and his situation, and I, and I had mentioned before that we would not talk anything negative about Mary and Barbara, but we were going to continue to uplift him and his family in their time of mourning. But for whatever reason, there is a broadcasting station out there and uh, I was at break at work, and I was sitting at the break table, and this one broadcasting station reported on Mary and Barbara. And it, 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 it bothered me because of the picture they showed. They had the audacity to show the picture of Mary and Barbara when he was at his low. 
when he was, you know, going through at his dark time of his life. Shame on this broadcast. I, I, I really want to put this broadcasting station on blast, but just look it up. You'll see it. So sad that they would picture, draw, draw the image of this man and at this time of mourning for what all he have done. And this is a local channel. This is a local channel. This is right here in Texas, in the DFW area. And instead of uplifting and encouraging and, and, and mentioning the good things about Marion Bob, this, in, this, this particular um, broadcasting station had the audacity to belittle him. Talk about his past. <sighs> but that's what some people do. But that's not what we do here. We not we don't do that in the Cowboy Hunt. We lift each and every one of our players, our subscribers, uh, those that participate. We lift each other up. We spread love because we are a family. We are the Cal Dallas Cowboy family. DC4L, and that's who we are, and that's what we do. We lift each other up. So with that being said, so I just had to share that because that was really on my mind, and I had to share that because it bothered me that somebody would do that, this particular broadcasting station would do that to Mary and Barbara. <laughs> but to move on, guys, we got to move on, but you know, I just want to share that with you guys, and maybe some of you guys probably had a chance to, to witness this broadcast station that did this. But nevertheless, it is what it is. Some people just, you know, just stupidity written all over them and they can't help. It. Just pretty stupid. But hey, I wanted to talk about something here. Let's move on. We're going to move on again. So um, up on a better note, a higher note, a uplifting note, a uplifting moment. Welcome to find out Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott <laughs> found themselves coming out on stage at the Kenny Chesney concert last night. Hmm. They came out to a song called The Boys of Fall. Now this song is a it's it's a Texas song. It's you know, y'all you guys know that football is big in Texas. And I, I want to play a little bit of it. It's, it's, pre, it's really cool. I'm going to see if I can play a little bit of it. I don't own the rights to the music, but I'm just going to play a really short part of it so you guys can hear it. But it talks about Texas football and how big Texas, how, how big football is in Texas. So I'm going to play a little bit and not no more than 30 seconds, but just. I don't know why, you know, your coach is this and your coach need to do that. But it's a great song. But anyway, so he's he played that song and Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott came out on stage. Uh when they came out on stage, they brought a <clears throat> they brought a helmet with with them. Anyway. Mm -mm. <laughs> but uh so they bring the they bring a helmet out on the stage. <laughs> I got a little choke there, guys. But uh <laughs> And, you know, so they were roaming the stage and, and Kenny was just excited. He was like, whoa, what the crap's going on, you know? So while they're out there, you know, they're embracing Kenny and Kenny embracing them. And, and Helmer comes out there. So they walk in the stage and they're walking around. And uh, Kenny's a good guy, man. I, you know, I love that song, The, the Boys Are Fall. You know, it's a real good song. And um, so, yeah, they're walking the, walk the stage. So they're looking for somebody to get his helmet to. So just so happened, this one kid had a cowboy jersey on, okay? And sure enough, Dak saw him with the jer cowboy jersey on. He pointed at him and said, yeah, bring that kid up. You can find it on Twitter. 
And uh, so they picked the kid up out of this out of the audience, brought him onto stay onto the stage. And uh, you know, they were all excited, high five and everything, and Dak, you know, he signed the helmet. And while the kid was there with with this number eighty two jersey on, which we know who that is, you know, uh, Jason Witten, all of a sudden here comes Jason Witten coming out the back. So this kid is super excited, and he, I mean, you know, these guys really made this kid day. And Jason Witten, he took at the time to sign his jersey. So it was really really cool to see that take place. And and old Kenny, he just jumping up and down. He's excited. <laughs> he was excited. But uh, yeah, Ken is a good guy. But man, there was a lot of people at that concert last uh, was last night, and uh, oh man, gosh, it was great. But yeah, they made a kid dream come true and uh, got the autograph helmet and got his jersey signed. So big up to Mike McCarthy, Dak Prescott, and Jason Witten for making this kid's day. You know because they didn't have to, but they did. So, you know, big ups to the kid. I'm sure he's going to cherish that jersey and that helmet. I can see it, ha it happening now. So he's probably got it framed and put up and whatever else. So con uh, congratulations to the young man, the young kid that got the helmet and jersey. And a big uh, big shout out to Dak Prescott and uh, Jason Witten and Mike McCarthy. So, yeah, that was great. So anyway, in other news, I'm not going to try to keep you guys here long. Other news, I know you guys heard about the competition. The competition between Tank Lawrence and Michael Parsons. I'm sure y'all heard about it. But you know what? My question is, why is it always the defense is always competing against each other to make each other better? But we don't hear not, we don't hear about the competition on the offensive side of the ball. Does it happen on the offensive side of the ball? Offensive side of the ball, they're more like, yeah, what's up, man? You know, they, but it's like the defense side of the ball, they're always competing, you know, to get better or competing to, you know, uh, push the other guys. So basically what it was uh, was said is Tank Lawrence said, you know, you know, he wants the title back and, and you know, you know, he, he felt led to try to get the title back after seeing Michael Parsons and what he done. Well, you know, he said, you know, you got to work hard to get it back. When Michael Parsons came back and said, well, you know, I like Tank Lawrence. I want him to be the best he can be. And, you know, I'm sure he's going to come out doing what he can. But he said he's never, ever getting that title back. He said if 10 is the, is the sack, sack total, he said he's going for 20. He said it's going to be a race to the quarterback. I like that. I like that. I like that. So we know that we're going to have some competition on this defensive side of the ball of who gets to the quarterback first. You know, it's like running the race, you know. You you a kid, you y'all running, try to go touch the hands out the end. This is exactly what these guys are going to be doing. A friendly thing of competition is never never hurts anything or, or hurts anybody. So I'm sure they welcome that. That competition, which is going to be something to see. I'm sure they'll be talking about it all um, through the OTAs and training camp. So that's going to be something to see. But, um, yeah, so that's 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 some more news that, you know, that's going on. Also in the news, they're talking about trade rumors. Trade rumors, y'all. So, yeah, I know you guys probably wondering who are they talking about trading. Nah, it's just a rumor. I just It's just a rumor. A rumor from a rumor that come from another rumor, which started from another rumor, and the other rumor start the other rumor. <laughs> so, yeah, so the rumor is the Dallas Cowboys and the Patriots are, Patriots are talking, and what they want to do is trade Tristan Hill to the Patriots for Nikhil Harry. Again, they're looking for a veteran quarterback a veteran i mean not quarterback a veteran a veteran receiver you know what i mean <laughs> they're looking for a veteran receiver so again this doesn't make sense you had a veterans receiver and we got rid of him for a fifth round pick but now you're looking for another veteran for receiver and i say that about receivers because after listening to brian broaders Brian Brothers had mentioned outside of Michael Gallup, CeeDee Lamb, and Jalen Tolbert, <laughs> he was not impressed with the backup receivers. 
this guy from Brian Broaddus. He said he wasn't impressed with the backup. He said they, they have no speed. They have no speed. He was not impressed of seeing the guys that was out there. I guess he's talking about Simi Fajoko, TJ Vasher, and all the other guys that uh, Fry Froggle, all those guys. And I said myself, I really didn't see any speed. Noah Brown. Noah Brown is not, you know, one that has top speed. But all these guys are possession receivers. They're there. They can catch, but that's about what they can do. You're not gonna they're gonna don't have they don't have the breakaway speed. But yeah, so this is the trade rumors. I don't like it. I don't like it. I mean, Nikhil Harry. I had to look at his contract and what that means. I mean, but and then again, we had three receivers. Are we still going to be able to distribute the ball to all three receivers like we weren't able to last year? With Dak being better, I'm, I'm hoping and I'm praying that things will be better. You know, so so that's one of the rumors out there, guys. Just want to share that with you. But anyway, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, you know, so there was an interview with, you know, Michael Parson as well. You know, they was – Asking him questions and doing his, um, you know, after the OTA practice. And, you know, they would have mentioned something about Diggs, Trayvon Diggs and, and Michael Parsons, and, you know, doing a lot of trash talking. But iron sharpens iron. This is what defense, they're pushing each other. You know, you, man, you get on your coverage, man. Well, if you get to the quarterback fast, I, it makes my job easy. So who, what's going on? Do your job, I can do my job. So we don't know what the trash talk. But, you know, he just said it brings out the dog. Michael Paul said it brings out the dog in you when, you know, you're talking trash. But he was also asked about, you know, his working out with uh, DeMarcus Ware. Now, what he said about that, he said, you know, uh, they both have different styles of playing. But he said the thing about what he can take from DeMarcus Ware is the, um, you know, the comparing of the reads of the defense. You know, so that's what he said he can definitely take from DeMarcus Ware because, you know, he played like the, Michael Parsa. I, I play my own way. I play my own way. That's what I do. I play my own way. So, um, you know, but I can, what he was saying, but I can take, you know, uh, the comparison of how DeMarcus Ware reads his defense compared to how I work, uh, read my defense. So he said, uh, when they get the town time, he'll be getting back with the Marcus Ware, and they'll start working out again, and you know he'll start picking his brain again, which is great, which is great to hear. Um, so let's talk about this, guys. So real quick, um, I guess we mentioned we kind of touched base on one when we talk about the needs of the Cowboys. Personally, what I think, you know, one need is we do need a veteran receiver. You know, and I threw Dez out there, and people kind of looked at me funny. But then a lot of people kind of, you know, hey, like the idea. You know, you're going to bring some veteran old back, bring Dez back. You know, that's why I look at But Nikhil, Harry, and, you know, some of these guys we don't know. I don't know. But after looking, we did the video on uh, last week on the, uh, uh, when we did the live, a uh, live stream, we was looking at the, uh, the roster and, and I really noticed also we're real thin at the guard position. We only one deep on both sides on the guard position. So, you know, maybe we can get a swing guard in here. And I know we was talking about something about one of the centers can play guard. Well, I don't know how good are they at the guard position. I, I personally would rather have a true guard. But maybe one of those guys can probably do a swing guard from the center position. We don't know. But I think the center and the receiving – uh, areas or positions are where we need to probably fill those voids and maybe defensive line as well the interior of the defensive line you know so you know we talked about john ridgeway we talked about oh we talked about gallimore and we have um what's his name terrell basham yeah terrell basham so uh, again we still might be looking for somebody else to come in and fill that position so we'll see what happens with that but also um Zeke had a little bit to say. Well, they, they interviewed him for nine minutes, and bless his heart. I knew he was like, oh, I wish they finished. But, yeah, they grilled him for nine minutes. But Zeke um, did his little interview after the OTA practice, and they asked him how did he feel. He said he feel 100%. He feel 100%, a lot better than he did last year. And uh, so the question was asked, you know, 
now that you older, how do how is your workout? And Zeke pretty much said, I work on those things that may cause deficiency in me, you know, those things that I need to work on now that I'm older. You know, it's not about the speed, you know, it's not about uh, learning or how to cut or learning how to carry a ball. He's past that. Now it's about tweaking those things that kind of causes a, causes a de deficiency with him. But, um, you know, and that, that's something to think about. You know, I'm sure he's older now. He's past the going, running through the cones and cutting left and right and learning how to spin moves. He's past that, but it's more detail at the age that he's at now. But uh, he also mentioned he, he talks real well about the rookie class. He said, you know, he thinks that they we, they have a great rookie class. You know, um, he's looking forward to see what they bring to the table. Um, so, um, yeah, he talks real highly of all the rookies, which is a good thing. But uh, he also mentioned that he wanted to play at a high level this year. He wants to play at a real high level um, this year to prove a point. But also, um, you know, he, he said it was frustrating having a season the way they had and and not being able to not being able to finish like they should so um you know so i'm sure they he's taking that into the consideration this season as well and i'm sure he's going to be uh working towards doing better as a whole team not just him as an individual but as a whole team so you know um these are some of the things that was going on you know during the OTAs, so I think they'll come back on the 14th and start up again. But I just wanted to get on here, guys, and share some news with you about what's going on with our Cowboys. And right now, you know, again, uh, things are getting closer and closer as we get ready for the training camp. We've got a few more sessions of OTAs, and then we'll go from there, and then we'll move right into the training camp. So, Ox and get ready. But anyway, guys, I just want to take our time and kind of up your date you to what was going on and um, keep you uh, updated you know, with our Cowboys. So I'm not going to hold you any longer. So like I always say, don't nothing come to a slip of butter dream. So let's make it happen.